Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I bet we've all toasted bread in a toaster. Let's revisit this process. We turn the switch on and put the bread in the toaster. The wires inside the toaster gets heated up and pop the bread out. This way we have our bread ready. This process employs both mechanical and electronic operations and thus is considered a mechatronic system. In today's video, we'll be discussing exclusively on mechatronic systems. If we take an electric kettle and boil water in it, then the input is electricity and the output is the changed temperature of the water. When we talk about systems in mechatronics, we can represent it as a box or block diagram that has an input and an output. This is termed as modeling of a system. In a mechatronic system, we are concerned about not what goes inside the system, but what the output is. A typical mechatronic system takes information from its surroundings and then transforms them into readable output signals. Now let us discuss what a connected system is. Let us take the example of a microphone. Here the voice or sound energy is the input into the microphone. The microphone converts this sound energy into electricity electrical energy after which it goes to the amplifier. The amplifier then amplifies this input and the speaker gives us this amplified output in the form of sound. Flow of information is in one direction with the output of one block becoming the input to the next block. Such a system is called a connected system. The mechatronic system are classified into the following types measurement system and control system. The first classification is the measurement system. The measurement system consists of three basic components, sensors, signal processor and a display. The sensor is a device that collects the physical response from the environment. For example, let us take a digital thermometer. The thermometer collects the information of temperature from the environment and then transforms it into a corresponding value of EMF. The signal processor processes the information that it has received and transforms it into a suitable form for display. The information that is collected is in the form of an EMF. This value of EMF is small and hence needs to be amplified so that it can be displayed. This amplification is done via an amplifier. The amplifier converts the low value of EMF into a higher value and thus is termed as the signal processor here. Now that the input has been processed, the output needs to be displayed in a readable form. This is done with the help of the display system. In the case of a digital thermometer, the output is in the form of a digital reading. Next we have the control systems. The control system is divided into the following types open loop system and closed loop system. And a further subclassification is the analog and digital control systems. Let us consider the working of a fan. We switch the fan on, the electrical charges get stored in the capacitor, the motor converts these electrical charges into mechanical energy and then the fan rotates. The process is simple and one that takes place depending upon the information fed at the previous level. This type of system is termed as an open loop system. In this arrangement, no information is given back to the system. On the contrary, when we talk about closed loop system, information is given back to the system. This is also termed as a feedback mechanism. Here let us take the example of a thermostat. We switch on a thermostat and fix a definite temperature. The thermostat takes input from its surrounding continuously and checks if the temperature of the surrounding is the value as set in the thermostat. This is done by a feedback mechanism which takes the input from the surrounding and feeds it back to the system via a sensor. Depending on this, the thermostat increases or decreases its temperature to keep the surroundings at a constant fixed temperature. Closed loop systems are more complex when compared to open loop systems. Next, we'll talk about analog and digital control systems. In an analog system, the output varies continuously with time which can be represented by a continuous function. However, in a digital system, the output can be considered to be a series of on and off signals in which data is represented as a sequence of discrete values. Now, what are these continuous and discrete functions and where do we find them? Often, we need to convert them from one form to the other for proper functioning of a mechatronic system. For example, a digital thermometer measures temperature which is an analog signal and gives us the output on a digital meter. This conversion of the analog signal to digital signal is carried out by an analog to digital converter or ADC. Now the data in our music systems is present in digital form in the form of mp3s. But sound is analog in nature. Thus in order to hear the sound we need to convert the digital signal into an analog signal. This is done using a digital to analog converter or DAC. So uh, that's all about systems in mechatronics. I hope you guys got a good understanding with this short video. We'll see you in the next video with more interesting topics. Until then, bye.